You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike Benyon Rowe and Lee Robertson. Well, birthday sex is really just sex to celebrate the anniversary of your parents having sex. Oh, hello. You're watching Chewing the Cud, your light-hearted weekly look at the world through a slightly glittery kaleidoscope. I'm Mike Benyon Rowe, and with me today is the right hand in my circle wank. It's Lee Robertson. <laughs> I'm not doing a circle wank with you. No, I didn't say you are. I said you were the right hand in my circle wank. You're like important. But my hand was with me all the time. No, but you, as an essence, are like the, the right hand in a circle wank. You needed and appreciated. Oh, okay. It's a compliment. Well, what have you got for us today, Lily? Uh, I'm going to bring you some stories about, well, we've got some Australian anniversaries. Oh. Insurers to to talk about, yeah. And um, do we have a game as well? We do indeed have a game. Yeah. Um, and that's before we go worldwide and wish you a queer. But on screen now, you can see our contact details. It's at the Cud TV on social media. And if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can always have a good old binge. Just look at YouTube for Chewing the Cud. And as you can see, the names of people who have reached out and touched our souls going along the bottom of the screen. It's time to get up to date on the things you may have missed from the news in the buzz. <laughs> that was a long one. Said that before. No, you haven't. So we're going to start off with something a little bit more serious. Serious face. Uh-huh, which is a, a serious thing about addiction. Okay, be serious. Be serious, okay? Because a lot of times we, we make light-hearted and, you know, fun of things, right? And this, this can be quite a serious thing. Okay? Mm hmm So we're going to talk about sex addiction. Okay. Okay. Have you ever suffered with an addiction like sex? You know, half a century of being stunningly attractive and gorgeous could be an addiction. Then, guilty. Lock me up and throw away the key. So no, Mark, I have No, okay. <laughs> I thought so. Because um, addiction can impact you in lots of different ways, okay? Um, and so there's some warning signs of that your partner may be addicted to sex or have a sex addiction. There are basically seven signs that you or your partner could have a sex addiction. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, the first one is uh, being obsessed with thoughts of sex. Yeah? Okay, mm -hmm. so not so always thinking about sex, 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 how to get it, when to get it, you know, who to do it with. Um, excessive or dangerous masturbation. Um, so that, that's, you know, people either without a partner or with a partner who can't keep up with their sexual demands, just having to masturbate a lot more, yeah, or in increasingly risky or unusual places. Mm -hmm. um, risky sexual behaviour, frequently cheating on partners for sexual encounters, um, Feeling intense shame or depression during sexual desires. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, or feeling withdrawal symptoms from not having sex. What are your thoughts there? There's thoughts happening in your brain. There's thoughts happening in my brain. Um, I've never experienced sex addiction myself. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever met anybody who has sex addiction. Um, but then again, I don't know what my friends are doing in the privacy of their own rooms. So there are, you know, physical signs external to a relationship that someone might be having this sort of problem. Um, so they could be quick to anger, they could be depressed, mood swings, that sort of thing. Um, you know, changing how they, they live their life almost. Okay. Um, so if you or anybody you know are struggling with sex addiction, please feel free to reach out to support services, which are available on screen now. But we'll move on to a different story now. Do you enjoy an opera? I don't. Why not? It's a musical, but with extra bits of singing. No, it's it's all a bit, it's all a bit wordy and a bit. There's no words in an opera. It's all sung. No, no. They don't have to be like the classical operas. So, like no. Deflated Mouse. None of them. None of them. I don't like it. Hmm. No. Hmm. No, Deflated Mouse. It's the name of an opera. I thought I was doing something weird to a mouse. Um, well, this is a story about an opera in Stuttgart that had 18 people rush to hospital after a very vigorous lesbian sex scene. 
Go on, you've got thoughts. Instantly, you've got thoughts. I mean, clearly, I'm not a lesbian. Um, Say clearly. <laughs> but I'm not particularly finding that sexy. A nun? A nun and a mummy? No, the mummy. So, in one scene, tattooed, nude performers clamber over a table, drinking wine and singing, while another lifts a sword in the shape of a crucifix and pushes it down into her throat. Just go to a Madonna concert. Watch her fall down some stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Happened once, I know, but I don't care, I'm holding on to it. Is this one of those, um, like, when they get something and go, right, we have to modernise this, let's make it all, like, hip and current and... It's a new opera. A new one? A new opera um, called The Feminist Mass, um, whose lead character, which is that lady there, um, is a young nun called Susanna discovering her sexuality. Right. Has she got a walker in front of her? Yes. I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, but at one point she pulls down Christ's loincloth on the crucifix um, to a scandalous climax. Sexy Jesus time. Jesus was hot, man. You name one Jesus statue or one crucifix where he's not ripped. Okay. Sometimes <laughs> uh -huh. it's like a line. Yeah. And it's best not to go over it. Okay. Generally, reporting, I'm reporting on something that's happened in, in, in the world. Ooh. So, um, so the people up until that point were okay with the Jesus... Well, not quite. It wasn't just that point. There's a lot of sexuality expl being explored in the whole thing. And some lady-on-lady -lady action. Lady-on-lady. Yeah, and I just 80 people just were overcome with the amount of information that they were being given, shall we say. And they fainted. Uh-huh. And, and had to get medical treatment. Wow. Mm -hmm. Still want to go and see it. No, no, no. 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 Well, if you want to go and see a, a musical you know, about exploring sexuality, don't go with Lee, but share it with us at the Cut TV on social media. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Now... Do you ever get felched? I'm joking. <laughs> Only by like Jesus. Said, Only by Jesus. <laughs> Felching. <laughs> Felching by the Son of God. <laughs> Technically, if he's the Lamb of God, does that not also mean it's bestiality? Oh. Ooh. Depends what form he's in. At that moment in time. It's not a shapeshifter. It's not a transformer. Now... You have a garden. I do. In which some have real plants. Yes. Most of which are, should we say, permanently green? Replica. Rather than evergreen. Mm. Permanently green. Replica plants. Plastic. No. I mean, no. They're made of a synthetic material that closely represents actual vegetation. Uh huh. And what's that material made from? Special, special material. Plastics. No, it's, it's, it's a trademark thing. It's a trademark thing. Yeah. PVC? No. Tupperware? No. Okay. Anyway, um, when you're out in the garden, do you ever get a nasty surprise? Like what? <laughs> I don't know. A surprise you weren't expecting that it wasn't pleasant. I'm not Goldilocks. I'm not. <laughs> She, well, for a start, she wasn't gardening. She was going. She was breaking into someone's house, eating the food, and having a kip in their bed. I don't think I have been surprised in the garden. <laughs> no, I never found a cat poo. A cat poo? You know, you didn't um, oh, it's a cat poo. <laughs> no, but I found a few human turds. Are they ones you've left behind, though? <laughs> it doesn't say no. <laughs> Most people will be going, no, at that point, not laughing and smiling. Um, well, this is a story about a lady who was doing some garden renovations. No renovations. Renovations. Or on renovations. Well, this hand action for renovation. Um, and was you know, basically her garden renovation got turned into a crime scene as she found a rolled up rug and within rug may have been a body are you going to say a human turd <laughs> <laughs> yeah because that's better than a dead body a human sized turd she, so right she was digging in the garden she found a rug Mm -hmm. Buried. 
Well, all half bones. Just laid out nicely. Just laid out nicely. The tree. Um, and then she, she... Did she unroll it? Um, she started to and went, oh, no. Um, so I went in. Neighbours phoned the police because the neighbours were helping. Oh. Um, police came, went, oh, no, and actually dug up her entire garden. <gasps> Was there more than one rug? Well, no, but it had to... Do, Crime scene, you had to investigate the whole thing, so I dug up the entire garden. She did it on purpose, didn't she? I think she did it on purpose. Did she? Because she suddenly had this freshly dug over garden that oh. she could renovate. Oh! Was it a real body? We don't know. We don't have an outcome from that. Oh! Because it was treated as a crime scene. Was it a mannequin? Yes, it was a mannequin. What a crafty lady. I don't know if it was a mannequin. I said, you always come with these half, half tales. You don't have the full details. I have all the details are important. I would. <laughs> come and tell me that... <laughs> don't come and tell me that there was a. We don't. I don't know, Lee, if it was a body or not. Uh huh. I don't know. Just whatever. But that's all from the buzz this week. And as always, I'm left disappointed. Well, stay right there. Just coming up after this short break, we get all up to date with the showbiz news with Lee. Welcome back, and you're watching Chewing the Cud. This is the part of the show where Lee puts his phone down and we look at the sparkly side of the world's celebrity media in showbiz with Lee. So this year, uh -huh. we have not one, but two anniversaries of major Australian LGBTQIA-themed films. Welcome to Whoop Whoop. What? Welcome to Whoop Whoop. Welcome to Whoop Whoop. Yeah, it was a movie that was uh, made in Australia. Is it porn? No. Okay, it's not that one then. Um, Muriel's Wedding. Oh. Mario. 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 You're terrible, Mario. You're terrible, Mario. Uh, can you believe it celebrates its 30th birthday this year? 30 shut years. Your whole mouth. They don't say that in the film. No, I'm telling you to shut oh. your whole mouth. Okay. Why would you lie? It, 1994. It Which was released. Is 10 years ago. No. No. So for, for those people who don't know what Muriel's Wedding is, it's. it's Get out of my house. Tony Collette and Rachel Griffiths, 20 something social outcasts who forge best friendships together. And it's kind of about, it was, had an ABBA approved soundtrack. Mm -hmm. It's just it's the most amazing film ever. Whole, I've not listened to a single ABBA song since because now my life is like an ABBA song. Yeah. Oh, it. it like the sailors with the massive dicks. There was kind of. <laughs> <laughs> there was like a trilogy of Australian films. That came out just around the time. There was Muriel's Wedding. Mm -hmm. There was another one that we're going to talk about in a minute. And then there was Strictly Ballroom. Don't admit you love me. Mm. Um, so, I mean, somebody, people, somebody who might slightly younger might not know some of the quotes from this film. But in which case, they should be educated. They should be. It should be on the curriculum. It is. The homosexual curriculum. Mm -hmm. you've, got, you've got your terrible Mario. Your terrible Mario. Party, party, party! That was that was the mother, wasn't that the the um, who did the party party party? That was one of the mean girls, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, then you've got stick your drink up your ass, Tanya. I'd rather swallow razor blades than drink with you. Um, well, with an Australian accent, a bit of an Australian accent. And and, and my favourite. Oh, by the way, I'm not alone. I'm with Mario. <laughs> I'm not alone. I'm with Mario. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> So what's happened is the cast. So it's not even that. Um, so I'm sucking um, Chuck's cock at the wedding. That that Chuck's make... cock at the wedding. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. So, so I'm sucking Chuck's cock at the wedding. Yeah. It's, that should be on there. Um, they've done so. The, the, not all of the cast. The majority, because some of the cast have passed on. Ooh. Some of the older cast have passed on. Um, they all got together on Instagram to do a happy birthday. Obviously, that's Muriel. Mario. That's the actress now. Tony Platt. She went on to have, like, massive success in, in films like The Sixth Sense. Mm -hmm. So they, they did a video. Um, uh, so some of the co-stars, um, Jenny Nivenson, Pippa Grandison, Ros Hammond, Matt Day, Nathan Kay. Um, Rachel Griffiths didn't join the Zoom conversation. Um, and um, I think we've got a clip of them it's all talking. Yeah, I'm Tony Collette. I'm Jenny Nevinson. Well, I'm Pippa Granderson. Hey, Muriel. Happy 30th. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday, Muriel. How many years is it? 30 years? What a coincidence. I didn't know she was still alive. I fully expected her not to still be alive. 
Oh, it's a it's a really lovely film. It is. It's what, Mike? What do you want to say? It's aged a bit. But hasn't everything? I've not. Okay. I, so when did this come out? Nineteen ninety four. I was still in high school. I was teaching in high school. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next anniversary. The second in the trilogy, I would say. Okay. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. That celebrates 30 years. Um, again, one of the groundbreaking films. I love this film. Films. Um, now, it's getting a sequel. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. I wasn't that f- much of a fan of the musical. <sighs> I like the musical. Oh, you did. I wasn't a fan. It was okay. Oh, I didn't hate it. But okay, how are they going to destroy it? So the good thing is, is that the original trio of stars, Terrence Stamp, Guy Pearce, and Hugo Weaving, mm-hmm. um, are coming back to star in it. I don't think that Terrence Stamp was still alive. Yeah. Um, Terrence Stamp's in the middle. Mm-hmm. Then we've got Guy Guy Pearce. And he said Guy Ritchie there. Yeah, Guy, Guy Pearce, Pearce mm-hmm. and um, Hugo Weaving there. Yeah. Um, and then I think we've got a picture of them. Guy Pearce. Would you still? Well, definitely in that. Dressed like that? Dressed like that. Okay. Take the clothes off, um, I don't care. So they'll return in the, the original roles. Okay, cool. Um, but the, um, <laughs> the plot details are still under wraps, which means you probably haven't done it yet. Um, but it'll feature a grown-up version of Tick's son from the okay. original film. Okay. Um, it would be quite grown-up now, because it was, what, seven or eight? 30 years ago, so it'd be... Like 37? Be close to my age. 109? Remember, you're a good, like, 15 years older than me. Um, but it's it's movie magic, so they'll, yeah, they'll but... do whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's in its day, it received an Oscar Outstanding Costume, mm-hmm. um, two Golden Globe nominations for Best Musical or Comedy, and for Stamps' leading performance, the film spawned a Jukebook stage musical and a book from Elliot and Alan Scott. Um, so, yeah. We've got a picture of how the actors now look. They all look at... They, they mean they've aged. They've aged, but they've not aged horribly. Would you still? Would you still like them sat um, on your face? Possibly. Possibly. Um, now, whether it'll be that they'll be in it completely, or whether they'll just like make a cameo at the beginning and brand new characters, it's very exciting, isn't it? Mm, I mean, very exciting. exciting. As long as they don't ruin it. Yeah, there's always the chance. We can but hope. Mm. You know, there's two things I don't like about you, Felicia. Your face. Both, Both of, of them. them. It's Again, it's very quotable. Again, <laughs> very quotable. Stuff that perhaps people would not be happy to say nowadays. Let your tampon and blow your box apart. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but I still say that <laughs> to my mother on Christmas Day. <laughs> it's a tradition. <laughs> right, anyway, last bit, last bit of show news. Let's go on to a, another legend of entertainment. Okay. Julie Goodyear. Now, sadly... What? What? Sadly? Sadly, Julie Goodyear, she, she has dementia. Okay. She's not doing brilliantly. Okay. Um, not but what I thought you were about to say, but okay. She's 82. Mm-hmm. She played Bette Lynch on Coronation Street for, for a long, long... She kind of kept, kept coming and going and then going off somewhere to Spain and then coming mm-hmm. back again. Um, well, she has put her four-bedroomed farmhouse set in 15 acres of land up for sale. It's got stables, it's got raw iron gates framed by two golden eagles, and it also has its own cobbles on the driveway. Um, Interior shots on Zoopla show Julie's love of leopard print. Mm -hmm. Evident. Now, you wouldn't expect... I mean, that is relatively... Low-key. Low-key. I mean, there's there's the leopard there. Mm -hmm. Um, It gets slightly more intense as you you go through. Um, So the next picture we have... A bedroom. So that's... She's, she's, oh, she's put a bed against the wall. It's not allowed to do that. It just... I'd put it in the middle of the room, sticking out. Why? That feels very much a, against the wall. Well, you don't, you're don't. you not seeing what's at the other side of the room, though. Okay. So there's evidence of the leopard. Uh-huh. Yeah. Then on the there's other a chair side, in front of a door. That's a trip hazard. That's the other side of the room. Oh, no. It's awfully tacky. But it's also as camp as tits. I mean, 
I, I can see her being quite happy there. But I'm thinking trip hazard. Right? She's got carpet next to a bath. That's going to smell. Oh! Oh, she's... Rancid. Oh. Um, rancid cock. Um, <laughs> that was me doing a Bet Lynch impression. Not a rancid cock. <laughs> okay, that's not what she's she said. Cock, you just, you just said she? Oh, rancid cock. cock. What do you want, cock? Um, yes. I in initially thought that was... <laughs> I initially thought this stuff was cork. You know, like those 70s cork <laughs> tiles. It's some it, sort of gold, isn't it? It's some sort of a like gold leopard print. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she and her husband, Scott, who's 55, decided to sell up because... There's a 30-year 30, 30 age gap there? He's 55. Okay, and she's 82. Okay, so it's 30-year age gap. I so I thought she was I thought she was a lesbian. Well, she was at one point. Was she? Yeah, she was bi. I think she's bisexual. Okay. Yeah. Um, not that that makes any difference to selling a house. Um, and well, <laughs> buy a bisexual house. I don't know. I don't know. That's its feature in there. Maybe. Um, I'd just go for a look round. Do you think you're allowed to? Shall we go? I don't want to go. I do. You go. <laughs> I don't know whether you're just allowed to go and have a look round. So you have to pretend you're interested in buying it. Okay. So, not that I've ever looked round a celebrity's house that they were selling, but you have to, you know, let them know that you've got the funding arranged, who the mortgage is with, and you've got... What about if I wore a right. full-length leopard print coat? I'd probably try and frame you. And went, go and suck your house, cock. Well. And, and that's, that's the end of this week's showbiz news. Cock. Well, thanks for that, Lee. Never before have I had you offer so much cock to me before. Uh, but don't go anywhere. It's coming up next. We have our Game of the Week. <music> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud with me, Mike Benyon Rowe, and that person there, Lee Robertson. Now, it's this part of the show where we're going to play a little game. And this time we're going to... What? Did you get excited by me saying little game? Little game. Um, and we're going to play BBB, or Bin Bang Betroth. Not Brazilian butt lift. No, because that would be I was hoping that, oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Numbers. It's Lee that's going to play that one, who's my favourite person who sat next to me. So, off you pop. Game of the Week. So, Lee has a, a, a collection of, of people, alive and dead, that he's going to basically make me choose amongst them. So, are you ready, Lee? I'm, I'm just going to randomly pick three people from this pile of cards, and um, you have to decide which one you would like to bin, as in, bin. not have them in your life. Uh -huh. uh, bang, as in make sweet love to, or betroth, get married to them. Okay. Okay, so, your first one... Mm -hmm. Is your next door neighbour? Okay. Followed by Simon Cowell. Okay. And Miss Princess Leia. Okay. Which next door neighbour? Your next door neighbour. I have two. Um, it does not specify whether it's the right or the left. Well, I will let you pick left or right. I will say the left hand neighbour. Left hand, that's Eileen, who is 84. So, bang Simon Cowell. Oh, really? Right, sell the story to the papers. Right, marry Princess Leia. Okay. Right, because maybe that will then stop the, the whole rest of the Star Wars action films happening. Um, which means, unfortunately, I've got to put Eileen in the bin. Oh, she's not got much time left. Um, she hasn't, which is quite sad. Oh, oh. Who would have known that you were a... He was sexually attracted to... Um, I didn't say I was sexually attracted to Simon Cowell. So, Simon I said Cowell. I'd bang him and sell his, the story to the papers. I w So, Simon Cowell top or bottom? Oh, or he's, side? He's, he's definitely a side. Or a crying top? A crying top? A crying top. <laughs> you know what a crying top is. No! Someone that when they've come, cries. Oh... Not like just like a, a teary, like a full-on snot bubble cry. Like thank you, like thank you, thank you for the joy. Oh, okay. Um, so your next three are Miss Trunchbull from um, Matilda. Okay. Prince Harry. Okay. Bang. Um, 
and Sarah Jessica Parker. Sarah Jessica Parker. Okay. From Bang Harry, Ben JP, and Mar and Betrayal the other one. So, so you'd bang Prince Harry? Yes, 100%. Okay. Massive penis. How do you know he's got a massive penis? Ginger. You're just, just hoping that he has some. Massive. So you're going to, right, okay. And what are you going to do with Miss Trunchbull? Binner. Binner. No, you, who else was it? Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, no, she was binning. So I'd, you, have, to, I'd have to betroth um, Miss Trunchbull. Oh, okay. And and Miss Trunchbull. She has oh. chocolate cake. Button. We're married, we don't have sex. Oh, okay. Good point. Good point. Yes. Okay. Married. Married in, in, a, in a male and female like heterosexual relationship. No sex. That's the way God intended it. I always got lesbian vibes from Mrs. Trunchbull though, Miss Trunchbull. That's alright, I give off a definite vibe. That's what Marriage. I was about to say, but Marriage of Convenience. Yeah. Um, right, okay, your next three are Vanilla Ice, the um rapper. Okay. Um your friend's grandmother. Your grandmother's dead, right? Or Godzilla. I know what I'd do. <laughs> <laughs> You'd bang Godzilla. <laughs> um, totally. So who's the first one? Vanilla, vanilla ice. ice. Vanilla Ice now or Vanilla Ice in his heyday? Vanilla Ice whenever. Okay, because bang him in his heyday. Because he was fit in his heyday. Um, Your friend's grandmother. Bin. Bin. Bin, friend's grandmother. Because they're all dead. Oh. Getting a bit of an ageist vibe from you, Mike, but you know, whatever. Huh? What was that? A bit of an ageist vibe from you, just getting rid of all the old people. No. Right, I'm so. Betrothed Godzilla. And so you'd marry, you'd be betrothed to Godzilla? Yeah. Now then, Godzilla. Top. Oh, power bottom. Power bottom. Pa angry power bottom. Angry power bottom. Wow. Um. <laughs> You'd have to be very careful, though, if he's an angry power bottom. Why? I'm not going to need pieces, wouldn't he? He has fire, fire. Does he, does he have fire? Does he have a laser beam eyes? They sure. just smash things because it's a giant um, thing. Okay, your next choices are Jennifer Lopez, formerly JLo, Captain, Captain America, Bang, Hillary Clinton. Marrying Hillary Clinton, sorry, Hills. You were very, very quick there. J Lo's in the bin. J Lo's in the bin. J Lo, Mariah Carey, both of them in the bin. Oh dear. Don't care what the other choices are. But, but it doesn't matter how many rocks she's got, she's still Jennifer in the block. She's have a little, now she's got a lot. Uh huh. Not plastic. Know where she came from. She's come from the Bronx, she should get in the bin. Don't like it. Jennifer, right, Jennifer Lopez is gone. So, Captain America. Bang. Bang. And you, so you're betrothed to Hillary Clinton. That's okay, I'm alright with that. Okay! Um, Captain America. Yes. Bottom, top, side. Side. A side. Now you must, have, you must explain what a side is. A side is someone that doesn't engage in or enjoy penetrative sex. So you just slide it between their butt cheeks? No, just lots of oral and body contact and stuff. Okay. <laughs> Glad we've got to clear that. Okay, so your next choices are Sheriff Woody from um, Toy, Toy Story. Story. There's a snake in my boots. That's what he said. Okay. Morgan Freeman, actor, and Princess Diana, angel. Okay, I'm sorry about this. Are you going to offend people? I'm going to bang Morgan Freeman. Wow. Because I imagine v dirty verbal sex with Morgan Freeman would be hot. Dirty verbal sex. You know, a dirty talk. Him saying... I mean, in, his, in that voice of him? In that voice. Okay. I think that would be the most erotic thing ever. Right, so I'm banging Morgan Freeman. It's very right? revealing this again. I would marry Woody. Oh. Right, because he's the perfect husband, because he goes limp whenever you're around. Oh, so this is, uh, he's like six inches tall and you can shove him up your bum. Yeah, no. that too. Um, and then, uh, which means Princess Diana. <gasps> Don't 
can you speak ill of Diana? I'm not speaking ill of her, I'm putting her in the bin. <gasps> what? Never mind. I think she did a lot of great work for the People's community. Princess Mike she did a lot of really good stuff for charity. But I just... It's fine. It's all right. Ugh. Right, okay. Gordon Ramsay. Scooby-Doo. Wonder Woman. Bang Wonder Woman. Okay. Would she tie you up with her golden lasso? Yes. Oh. Um, Gordon Ramsay, I'd marry. Oh. Because I'd never go hungry. <laughs> right, and then, um, who is that I'm putting in the bin? Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo, you're going in the bin. Hmm. Would, but Gordon Ramsay would wake you up every day with um, two pieces of bread either side of your head going, Who's a stupid sandwich? It's an idiot sandwich. Yeah, idiot that. sandwich. But if that's what gets you through, then that's what gets you through. But also, it'd be shouting at you, you moron, what are you doing? And uh, to be fair, it's a bit hot. Does that do, does that do it for you? A little bit. <gasps> While you're whipping up some batter. <laughs> that's what we could call it, yeah, whipping up some batter. <laughs> It's a very similar hand action. <laughs> um, you can okay. use machineries to help you. <laughs> um, Mark Zuckerberg, ben. inventor of <laughs> nothing. Ben. Facebook. Nicholas Cage, crazy actor. Okay. Ricky Gervais. Oh, can I put all three in the bin? No, you must bang one. Right, okay. You must I'm bin sorry. one. So Zuckerberg must... has just been saved by Ricky Gervais going straight in the bin. Okay. Um, because he's a. <gasps> um, so we've got Nicholas, Nicholas Cage, Cage and Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg married just so I can divorce him and get half. Okay. Um, Nicholas Cage is after bank. We're coming up after this short break. We are going to go explore the world in Wish You Were Queer. <laughs> uh, welcome back. You are still watching Chewing the Cud with me, Mike, and Lee Robertson. Now we're going to do some exploring in Wish You Were Queer. Where have you been, Mike? All right. Aggressive much. Where have you been? Where have you been now? Um, so I, I got sent away. St. Dan. St. Dan, His Majesty's pleasure. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's that's like a w wish come true, that, for you. Passed around like currency. Um, no, I went to Budapest. 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 Is yeah. that how you say it officially? That's how I say it. Budapest. Whether it's right or not, that's a different matter. I do not speak Hungarian. Okay. No. Um, but I, I spent a couple of days there. So I was there for four days, three nights. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Jazz hands convention. Jazz hands convention. <laughs> there was a convention at the hotel. Um wasn't just hands. Oh. It was some sort of international business development. And oh, a, that sounds boring. A gentleman from Serbia that I had a conversation with, shall we say. Um, when you say conversation, did he shout into your arse? No, but it was oral. Um, so as is customary when we go away, yeah, we do a little bit of filming to see exactly what it's like there. Mm. Okay. Um, so the first day I was there, I actually went to one of their world famous spas. We can wait. So this is that one. Oh, okay. It's very reminiscent of many undergrounds. It's it's a train that goes underground. It was very um, swift. It was very swift, uh, like Taylor. But this is the part just outside the spa, and this is the spa. Uh, the complex oh. is huge. Oh, gothic. Very gothic. Yeah. Um, natural natural heated spa. So, so the water that comes out of the ground, very salty, very warm. Well, you'd have been in your element then, wouldn't you, there? Salty and warm, yeah. Salty and warm. Oh, yeah, I'm very happy. That's one's holiday. Mm. Um, but it's, that's how big the building is. That's the first side of it. And then this is inside oh, the spa. Oh, it's communal. It is communal, yeah. It's a spa. So there's my tootsies. Why is one of your toes black? It's just the angle. That's oh, OK. It's just the angle. Um, but yeah, lots of people enjoying themselves, bobbing about. There I am enjoying myself it is possibly the worst experience i've had in the, in the nude what not something i enjoyed all those people in that pool were nude well sorry trunks they're not nude almost some of them were basically nude 
Some of them were very, very tiny speedos. Well, it's that. And I wasn't, I wasn't upset by the people in the very tiny. Mine were like full on length, just above the knee, mm. just above the belly button kind of things. I mean, to be fair, that's quite revealing for me. I like, I prefer full on woolen Victorian swimming bathing costume that mm-hmm. here down to the knees, um, beyond. Um, was it warm? It was, it was warm. So above the water, it was windy. Because that's the outside. Bit of chill. But yeah, right. But in the water, it was lovely and warm. Did we want to like very comfortable? Were you like one of these influencers that goes around filming themselves? I was there. Literally, the video you saw there was the amount of video that I took. Oh. Um, it was very. I was there on my own, and everybody else was with people. I was very solo man at swingers party. You know what that's like. Um, <laughs> very popular. Yeah. Um, but it was very much a case of, I, I was very much out of the conversation, because oh. this trip was been planned for two people. You were the strange, single strange person. person. So it's just there bobbing along on my Rubbing own. your thighs. I wasn't rubbing my thighs, I was just bobbing <laughs> along. But that was day one, a very chilled day, very relaxy day. Day two, did a bit more exploring. Okay, and that's the castle by night, okay? Because what I did is I went on a river cruise. Oh. Oh. Um, but yeah, the Danube, as you can see, was very, very high. So a very, a river. They don't, you don't know, I'm aware what the Danube is. just the way you looked at me, I'm not sure you were, right? Um, it was very high, um, so we had to go a little bit slower than usual. It's a fairy tale, isn't it? It's very fairy tale, it's very pretty and very well lit. So you can see. Look, there I am. How are you doing that influencer thing? I'm just having a casual beverage. Yeah. Um, and I'm not holding it out on my arm's length. No, I wasn't. You haven't done the thing that... Oh, I wasn't holding it out about arm's length. Well, who was holding it then? I had it propped up on something. Did, I, did you have it on a gimbal? No, yeah. just on a tripod. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so River Cruise, beautiful city that it is. You get to see all of it by river. With wine. I mean, surprisingly. On a river cruise. On a river cruise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Takes you yeah. through the inner city. Mm, yeah. Um, but then... The next day, I thought I'd do a bit more exploring of the old town. So there's a, they have a cathedral there. Well, it's actually a basilica, because they've got bits of St. Stephen in it, bits of dead person. What's a basilica? Um, it's a cathedral. With a dead person With a it. bit of a, a relic in it. Oh. So it's just a... A yeah. bejeweled skeleton. Yes. Is it? Yes. No, they have them. They d- Not that one, no. No. I think it's his foot or something. Oh. Bejeweled foot. Left testicle. I don't know. Um, we didn't get to see the bits of St. Stephen. Desiccated um, scrotum. Well, I got to look around, around the cathedral. Go up to the top of the cathedral. Oh. On the spire. and Going around the outside. Did you get vertigo? I, I don't enjoy outside. Uh, high up. I was holding onto the wall. Oh. <laughs> there was flat something. Were you, in a, were, you in a, were you in a group? No, somehow. No. It's a solo explore. But yeah. Got a video of it. So that's the outside. And that up there where you can see that little round bit. That's why I'm going to go and walk. Oh, how how high up is it? High enough to make me go, I don't like this. I would not do that. Lots of st- So they had nothing but stairs all the way up. Right? Um, and there's me finding a massive organ. Well, life finds a way. Right. A spiral stone staircase. Right? Very narrow. Mm-hmm. Or you have space for really me to walk around it. Mm. You kept going down that way as well. Did they not have a lift? They did have a lift for the last flight of stairs. But that's it. But this is the view you got rewarded with. Oh, how lovely. This is a very pretty view. Yes. Yeah. Can you get a postcode of that? Postcard? Postcard? Postcard of it, so you didn't need to go up? Well, apparently yes, but I went up anyway. Would you like a cloud? What? I do like a cloud. I enjoy a cloud, a full cloud. <laughs> you enjoy a full cloud? A voluminous cloud. Okay, so look, there's a lift going down. Oh, did you no lift going up? I, surprisingly, yes. <laughs> Was not happy. Did you push the old person out of the way? I did. I did. Good for you. Yeah. So that was, and then the last day was all about food, because I do like doing a food tour. Okay. Okay. Um, now, Budapest's got a big indoor market. Do they have a Tesco's? No. Okay. Um, but they do have chimney cake, which is cake. That they then fill with ice cream. Some an ice cream cone. I like an ice cream cone, but cake. Oh, okay. It's been a very busy day for me walking around a lot, so I thought I'd stop for a snack. There's a local delicacy where they take like meat and cheese, 
and stick it on like it's like on bread. That's, That's a, local a McDonald's. Delicacy. It's it's a local what? delicacy. One, it's a McDonald's. What do you mean it's a Two, McDonald's? why are you the same colour as that marble oh, behind you? Because I take good care of my skin. You won't you... Now this, this is the delicious cake. Not a McFlurry. Not a McFlurry. This is, look, delicious cake filled with ice cream in my beard. Pickles. Okay. They're very okay. fond of their pickles. Did somebody go fruit in the background <laughs> right. there? But that was a gallery. Um, <laughs> that's Petrinka, which is, they're just basically, it's their, their local spirit, right? Which was very delicious. How was it? It's definitely got a kick to it. Yeah, it has. Okay. okay. That's a drink called Unicum, like, um, which is their version of um, <laughs> cum. And this is me on my cooking class. Well, look at you. Making, making um, paprikash. Making vomit. Paprikash. Okay. Right. And that is George, who was doing the cooking class, who I'm a little bit in love with. Did you entertain him in your back scene? I wanted to. Oh, he did, smelt good. Did he not accept it? I didn't really go he that didn't far. He didn't try. I didn't try, because I thought it was a bit, you know, t I was paying him to teach me how to cook. Oh, okay. It crossed the line. Um, but yeah, food was, was a big thing, right? And they love their pickles. Okay. Right, and some of the pickles I wasn't expecting. So I, I brought some selection of foods. So starting with the good old gherkin. Just taking them. I don't really like gherkins either. Sweet, sweet and and, and vinegary. Okay. Don't like. I no. don't care for that. I don't care for that. Is that a tiny cucumber? It's a tiny cucumber. So this one is a delicacy that I tried and was like, I don't know what it is. And like, eat it and try it and then tell me. Is it human flesh? It is human flesh, yeah. Cheers. It's, it's, I, I can smell what it is. What is it? It's, um, it's a watermelon. I don't like that. I don't like it. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> and I'm not going to put that in my mouth. The actual, the, the, the acidic quality of just touching the, <laughs> the flesh of my face, I knew. <laughs> I knew. And I knew that's my what face. you... My Of my lower lip. <laughs> Taste it. Take a nibble. <laughs> no. It's really vile. No! No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I refuse. But I'm sure it's lovely. In a, in a sandwich. <laughs> Make you a sandwich then, okay. With some beef. <laughs> well, that's almost the end of the show for now. But on screen now, you can see our contact details. It's at the Cut TV on your social media. And if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can always binge us on YouTube. Look for Chewing the Cud. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> no.